Sarah Palin gets a new trial against the New York Times. May it please the viewers, I'm Rich Schoenstein. Welcome to True Crime MTN. And we're going to talk about the former governor of Alaska and her claims against the New York Times. I don't know if you remember this or not, but about two years ago, Sarah Palin went to trial right here where I am in New York City against the New York Times and lost before a jury. She brought defamation claims against uh, the newspaper and the jury ruled against her and she lost and she went ahead and appealed to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. And in what I thought was somewhat of a surprise, she has prevailed upon her appeal and the Second Circuit has ordered a new trial. So in 2022, the jury found Palin had not proved that the Times and the defendants were the Times and their editorial page editor, James Bennett. They have been accused of defaming Palin in an article, uh, a, 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 in an editorial really, that linked a map that Palin's political action committee had posted to a 2011 shooting that injured former Representative Gabrielle Giffords. In other words, what they said is that the PAC had put out a map and that that somehow related to the shooting had occurred and basically tried to connect Sarah Palin to the horrible shooting of Gabrielle Giffords back in 2011. Um, the editorial was published on the day of the shooting at a baseball practice in Washington, D.C. That's the same shooting that injured Representative Steve Scalise. It was meant to address political rhetoric uh, ahead of the shooting and make the point that these kind of things are tied to political rhetoric. But the Times erroneously said that there was a clear link between the map Palin's pack had posted, which had crosshairs, right? Showed one of those crosshair images on congressional districts, including Giffords. And so Palin's argument, the argument of her lawyers in her defamation lawsuit, is political rhetoric is one thing, but you know, you falsely asserted that she put a target on Gifford's political district, and that wasn't the case. Palin sued the Times. Uh, the case went all the way to jury. That's surprising in and of itself. Most of these defamation cases, as I've said before, are settled along the way, but this one went all to the jury. And the jury found that Palin did not prove actual malice. That's the legal standard in a defamation case because Palin is a public figure. Let me talk about that for a moment because this is a part of defamation litigation that people are confused about, right? To win a defamation lawsuit, typically you have to show that the person you're suing published something about you that was false and that that injured you and that you suffered damages. There's a lot of other stuff you have to prove. Obviously, to get to injury, you have to show that the false publication was seen by other people. You have to demonstrate some kind of injury to you. In the case of a public figure, you have to prove something called actual malice. And what I've always said is actual malice doesn't mean actual and doesn't mean malice. Proving actual malice, and I'm reading right now from the actual Second Circuit decision, proving actual malice requires showing that an allegedly defamatory statement was made with knowledge that it was false or with a reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. So it doesn't have to be actual, and it doesn't really have to be malice because it's not, it, they didn't have to prove that the New York Times was trying to do something maliciously to Sarah Palin, or was saying something bad about her on purpose, just that they published something false, either knowing it was false or recklessly failed to identify that it was false. That is the standard. And what happened at trial in this case was really interesting. The trial judge is Judge Jed Rakoff. He's a very well-known judge down in the Southern District of New York. Uh, he's been around a long time. He's known to be kind of temperamental. He's known to be a little bit hard, hard on the lawyers. And he actually said while the jury was out deliberating that if they came back and found actual malice, he was going to reverse the decision because in his view, 
there was no actual malice. But he went ahead and let the jury decide. And that's pretty common too. The district judge, the trial judge, would much rather let the jury render a decision than take over the province of the jury and take the case away from the jury. He let the jury decide. They came back and found no actual malice. And therefore, uh, the New York Times prevailed and Palin lost the case. So the Second Circuit Court of Appeals and this decision, you know, uh, maybe we'll put up a link if we can uh, when we post this, but this is a pretty lengthy decision. It's well over 50 pages. It gets into a lot of the details, but essentially what they found is that the judge improperly intruded on the province of the jury by making credibility determinations weighing evidence and ignoring facts or inferences that a reasonable juror could plausibly have found to support Palin's case. Uh, the appeal court found there were several issues. They found instances where there was erroneous exclusion of evidence. They found an inaccurate jury instruction. Uh, they ruled that one of Judge Rakoff's responses to a mid-deliberation jury question was uh, improper and all in all felt the jurors learned about the judge's dismissal while they were deliberating. They got push notifications on their phone. In other words, the judge said in the courtroom, I'm going to reverse if the jury comes back with a verdict against the times here. And the jury found out he had said that. They wouldn't have heard it because they weren't in the courtroom, but they learned from their cell phones. And so the Second Circuit said all of that, all of that improperly influenced the jury to find that there was no actual malice. And because the Second Circuit thought there was sufficient evidence to show that the New York Times either knew or should have known that it was false, uh, according to the Second Circuit, that basically poisoned the verdict, and they have to go back. And what does this mean? This means that if Sarah Palin wants it, and I assume she does, she gets an entirely new trial against the New York Times and its editor on her defamation claims. They get to go back, pick a brand new jury, start over as we do in these uh, in these new trials. What does it mean from the perspective of the New York Times? Well, I would think they might consider if there's an avenue to settle the case, because now they've heard from the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, by the way, you know, if you worry about this kind of thing, a pretty liberal federal court that has said, Sarah Palin has a case. And maybe that will encourage the New York Times not to push forward with another trial, but to try to settle this matter with Sarah Palin even if they don't believe the claims are reasonable, even if they find her politically distasteful, even if they don't like paying money, it might make sense to try to resolve the case with Sarah Palin rather than to take it back to another trial. Uh, you know, I've been saying now for a couple of years, really since the Johnny Depp case, that defamation is all the rage. You see so many of these de de defamation lawsuits and some of them have gone for trial. And this one, I thought, was an example of a defendant not prevailing because Sarah Palin lost. But that's what appeal is for, right? When the trial judge doesn't get it all right, trial judge calls balls and strikes, but he gets reviewed on all of that. And when the appellate court doesn't think it was proper, it sends it back. And right now, Sarah Palin is sitting in a pretty good position heading in to a new trial on her claims for defamation. And if that trial happens, we're certainly gonna be watching it and reporting on it here. I'm Rich Schoenstein, thanks very much for tuning in to True Crime MTN. Good to see you all. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to us. We're over 50,000 subscribers now, building a great audience. Don't forget to like this video. For now, we are adjourned. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman, here on the fastest growing true crime channel, True Crime MTN. And we'll see you next time.